Hey boys and girls, how are you going? So nice of you to join me for another video. We're going to be talking, of course, about Nikon products and specifically Z9 accessories. And it's really important, you know. It's great to have an awesome camera that has all those features, great autofocus and a wonderfully well-constructed, sturdy body. But if you don't have the bits and pieces to go along with it, to complement it, it can make it very hard to operate and get the best out of it. So we're going to run through my top tier 10 list. Uh, 10 items that I think are actually pretty much essential. If I throw another one in or out, uh, don't be too frightened if it's not exactly 10, but it's something around that figure. So what I'd like to start off with is first announcing some new Nikon uh, announcements and releases. Now we've got now the 180mm to 600mm zoom lens. That's a great one for bird photographers and sports action people who want to get their kids at the soccer game or go out on the weekends and take some photos of some wildlife and birds. I reckon it's a great value for money all round lens. Uh, I'm not necessarily going to purchase one immediately, but I am looking and I'm very keen to hear a lot more reviews of people with hands-on use of it and over time make sure its build quality and functionality is actually up for standard. Now, it's actually pretty good value, really. It's, it's not overly expensive, but as I do have something similar in the form of my uh, 70 to 200 with the two times teleconverter, that gets me around 400 mils and a bit of a zoom length coming uh, wider. I'm quite happy with that for the time being, but to have the extra reach would be awesome and to not have to use a teleconverter necessarily, well, that just, it's all a bonus, isn't it? So we'll uh, look into that one a lot further, but I'm very happy Nikon have released that. That's quite exciting. Now there's rumors also about the 35 millimeter f1.2 coming out and that should be exciting for a lot of videographers who want that shallow depth of field and perhaps low light uh, accessibility in various situations. So uh, for them that'd be awesome, I'll probably never get it. I have a 35 1.4 here in the Sigma range and to me that's well close enough. In fact, uh, I've got quite a few Sigma lenses now. Uh, just running through them, I'll, I will with you just to point them out because they're just sitting here. Uh, I've got the uh, 24, I got a 35 millimeter 1.4 out. I'm using the 50 mil 1.4 right now to video this YouTube video. So I'm using that on my Z6. And then of course I have the 85 as well. But that doesn't mean I have no Nikon lenses. Of course I love the Nikon lenses. I just mentioned I have the 70 to 200 S line lens and that's got the Nikon teleconverter. Apart from that, I also have now the little uh, zoom here. This is the 24 to 70 mil. And this is the F4 version with a telescoping out uh, lens piece for zooming. And this is actually a great little uh, versatile lens for holidays and travel and, and just you know shots when you're not expecting too much of yourself. You're not gonna overly pressure yourself with a shallow depth of field. In fact, for a lot of landscape photography, for example, that's exactly the last thing you want. You're more than happy to have F4 and above because you're probably shooting a lot at F8 to F11 for landscapes to get things in focus. But for certainly for general photography, F4 is quite an awesome all-rounder, and I find this a great zoom range. So 24 to 70, it's a proper Nikon S series lens, and it's a fine quality and very versatile. So I highly recommend this as an all-rounder for your uh, Nikon Z-mount uh, cameras. So it's important to have some Z-mount glass. So I have that in the uh, 70 to 200, and therefore I've covered really 24 to 400 really with the teleconverter, and I've got a lot of S lens there I can, I can utilize for most of my general purpose work. So it's sheer the value for money that I'm using these Sigma lenses for because I find at f1.4 and being quality primes of a good build, uh, I find them very great value for money. In fact, I got my, I've got four of these because I'm using one on the camera I'm filming with, and those four I collectively bought an average $600 each on eBay. That's $600 Australian or around $400 US. And when you consider it uh, 600 for me each one on average, uh, that's 6 four is 24, that's less money that it would cost to buy a 24 to 70, 2.8. So really that's uh, you know, outstanding value to get four 1.4 primes for the equivalent of that. Now I actually used to own the 24 to 70, 2.8 S lens, and it's a beautiful lens, make no mistake. I'm not gonna bag it in any way. It was a magnificent product. Uh, very high quality, sharp and versatile. However, it was quite chunky and heavy. And as a general purpose sort of carry around lens, it weighed quite a lot to lug that around with you for that little aperture advantage. So the difference between this F4 and its lightweightness and that big 2.8 chunkiness, I didn't feel I was really gaining that much by a 2.8. Uh, so that's where these 1.4s can come in handy. If I really need brightness or a shallow depth of field, I'm gonna choose those over a 24 to 70 2.8 anyway. So I moved on from that one and sold it and bought other products. 
But uh, that's also took place the same with my 50. I had the 51.2, as you all know, and I used to do quite a lot of photos and videos with that and show you. But of course, as I've got now, the as I'm filming with, the 51.4 from Sigma, it's so very close to that shallow depth of field and brightness, I don't see any point to having something two of the same, very similar, when one's worth over three and a half thousand dollars Australian and the other one's worth six hundred dollars. Oh, for the for the little marginal difference and advantage that 1.2 gave me over 1.4, it was not it was just money wasted in my opinion sitting in the cupboard. So uh, I've got to other options now, but I'm never going to bag on any of the Nikon lenses because they are awesome to own. If you can afford the money on them and have a, a kit bag full of them, I give you 10 out of 10 credit for that because they're great products. But that's mostly of what I've got to say as far as. Uh, uh, lenses and so on go. I will mention this though, I've had a few comments and I've noticed some articles where they're suggesting that the Z8 that is released is having some minor issues. It's having some minor issues with the, you know, these um, clips here that you put your straps onto, the little clamps on the side of the cameras. Well, they're suggesting that uh, some of these have actually pulled right out with their camera straps and the cameras have dropped to the ground. Now, how many that is and how frequently that happens, I can't say. It's probably maybe a very isolated case. However, uh, when you're spending that sort of money on a camera, I don't want that thing dropping to the ground because of a, a bad manufacturing error like that. That would be very disappointing. So just be aware, if you've got one of these camera Z8s, as good as they are internally, just be aware that because they're a lighter construction made of a graphite composite and not uh, all the magnesium alloy, there may be some weak points. So just be aware for the first couple of months of using it, Give yourself a little safeguard of always holding it with one hand at least to make sure that if something does give, you've got a safety net to grab it and keep it off the ground. Uh, the other issue uh, that uh, people have been mentioning was maybe the battery life issue. And look, I don't really think that's too big a deal. I mean, I've been using the standard uh, EL15BC uh, uh, batteries for some time from Nikon, and even in the DSLR days, they lasted forever. Uh, my Nikon Z6 and the Z7 I owned, they lasted a very long time as well. So I was uh, more than happy with their length. Just what you've got to do is just carry a couple of batteries. Always have two or three. And if you've got a couple of them, you can quickly swap in. It's really not a big deal. Just keep your eyes on the battery gauge and make sure you're not getting low at a crucial moment. So uh, that's pretty much it uh, for Nikon news, as it were. Uh, so what I'd like to do now is start getting into this Z9 program and all the accessories that I've, I've come with it at the moment. So let's just put up the Z9 on the table and I'll show you the first one because it's already attached, so it's just easy. And that is this cage. So uh, I'll bring it up a little closer to the camera. You may or may not get a good look at that if it uh, decides to be kind and get into focus. But either way, if it doesn't, I'll show you some close-up images anyway. But here, what I like about this uh, cage I'm using it for a video application, of course, is all the little ports and side screws and thread holes, uh, like an extra uh, flash mount here, cold shoe, you could call it. And of course, you've got more threads and you've got um, the ARIA mounts here and uh, more threaded holes on the bottom. And of course, it has the Arco Swiss plate built in. So that's sort of a fantastic uh, configuration for adding accessories that you want. Now, what are the accessories that I put on my video cage? And remember, this is specifically for video. You can use it for photos, of course you can. And it actually, it's molded quite beautifully to the hand. So one thing that uh, small rig do, and these are all small rig uh, cages and frames, is that they do mold them, if you can pick that up there, they mold them to the shape of your hand. So it actually still works very well with the grips. It's not, uh, you know, breaking the idea of taking photos with it if you had to. So I tend to just sort of leave it on all the time and put up with it when I'm mixing from video to photos. If I'm going to do photos all day, I'm going to get rid of this cage, I can tell you, because the rubberized grip in the hand is a lot more comfortable and sturdy to hold. But if you're flipping back and forth between one and another, you can certainly just leave the cage on. So as I said, this is the small rig version. I find their products very great value. They're all averaging around $100, and for that sort of money, you can buy a few different items, and this one here is a brilliant video rig. Now you may notice I have a little mount on the side here, and uh, this here enables me to uh, put on a handle. Now you might say, we've already got a handle on your camera, what do you want two handles for, Mark? Well, Small Rig do produce this beautiful little handle. It's a nice, comfortable grip, and it has this rotatable mount. So at almost any angle, you can mount this, depending on what suits you and your comfort at the time. 
but I prefer to have it at about this angle here and I'll show you why. You may notice it also has holes for mounting on it and what I've done is I've put a, a camera mount on it. So I've mentioned about these camera mounts. I don't believe the Z9 has any issues with those, but I like the fact that it's just a bigger hole and easier to get my clips through. These things I find a little bit fiddly and they're always moving on you when you're trying to put the clip in and I find that very exasperating. So we'll get onto those clips a little later. But right now, how do we mount this? Well, really it just slides down. So let me illustrate this for you. So there's a little button you've got to compress in there and you slot it down and you find the height you want. It is adjustable to some degree. Find the height you want and then you just, as you can see, screw it down by thumb and there it is. You've got a handle in there. Now what's the point of this? Well, when I'm videoing, I don't necessarily need now a, uh, a gimbal. I don't have to attach a gimbal because now what I can do is I can hold it steadily with one hand, my left, hold it again with the right, and I can have a very steady and smooth motion because two hands are carrying the weight. So the weight isn't such a burden. When you're carrying with one arm trying to do some photos, it can be a burden or annoying and uncomfortable and a bit ungainly. But if you've got two steady handles, put your elbows into your ribs like this, and you can use your body as basically like a giant tripod and get a nice smooth fluid motion doing video of people moving or animals and I find this extremely practical. Particularly it's practical when you're going up high. So if you need some high elevation video, it's extremely comfortable and practical. If you're gonna sit yourself there like a little tripod all day as if you're a monopod, that also works for you. It actually is very, very comfortable. So I'm just encouraging people to buy good, comfortable items. And uh, look, you know, the other advantage of this handle, and I'll be honest with you, I've been using the Ronin uh, RS3 for some time as a gimbal. And it's a, look, it's a brilliant unit, but I've actually got rid of it. And I got rid of it for two reasons. Not because it was no good, because it was a magnificent unit, probably the best I've ever had. But I got rid of it because I now have the Z9. The Z9 was a bit heavy and weighty for that gimbal. You really need the pro version, which I didn't have. I had the lighter version because I was used to using Z6 and Z7s. Now I've got this heavier camera and I'm using quite heavier glass, I found that it was a bit overdone. So uh, I got rid of that one, didn't want to buy another one because I thought it's all just too big and cumbersome to carry around with me. I have enough lenses and gear to bring with me without bringing a gimbal as well, just it was a real burden. So what I've decided to do is this item here is so quick and easy to assemble, I can put this together very, very quickly and easily, pack it up and look at the tiny little package it is. The cage doesn't take any space because it wraps around the camera so beautifully that it's not a bulky item to bring. So if I know I'm going to be doing video, this is not really an accessory I'm bringing, that just stays on the camera and it's quite compact. This is really the only accessory I need to bring and how small is that? It's a lot smaller than any gimbal you'd bring around with you and a lot more comfortable. And also what you can do with it as well, and I've shown you the handle on, so we're assuming that is still on if you wanted it, but you also buy small rig, uh, have this little uh, handle. Now this is a great one because it has a wonderful mounting little platform here with lock-in pins. And what you do is you just line it up with the appropriate section on top has the little pins into that bracket for yourself. You screw it in nice and tight. And now as you're filming, you can film like this. Now this is particularly good for low angles. So obviously because you're grabbing the camera on the top, it's terrible for up high. But what it is extremely good when you're just skimming along the ground with video, you maybe you're filming dogs or cats or little creatures down low, or your children are playing and they're run, rummaging around on the ground, rolling down a hill, or you can follow them along and you can just skim along the ground with that and film everything nice and low and comfortable. And because it's center balanced like that, it does actually stay very sturdy. So I love this little system and I think that's a great unit for videoing. On this uh, topic, you can also of course use a small compact little tripod or a monopod. And uh, that gives you the versatility about how to put it down onto a monopod or a small tripod, little travel one. And uh, of course, you know, obviously it's a bigger camera. You could use bigger tripods, uh, and I would, specifically if I'm doing long-term video. But uh, for just hit and run and on the go, something's better than nothing. So a little lightweight, uh, you know, tripod is fantastic do the job for you. So these little accessories, I love them. Why do I love them so much? Because they're so cheap, inexpensive, they're all aluminium, so they weigh next to nothing in your camera bag, and they're small and light. So you can compact this up here to that little tiny bundle. See that little bundle there? Just folds up in your camera bag, it's less space than any one little lens. Certainly about a quarter or a uh, fifth of the size of any gimbal you're gonna put in your bag. So that is so compact, I love that. So that's something I really wanted to talk to people about. Uh, I think these things are fantastic. So let's just put them over here for now. We're gonna get them in vision just so you can see them and have a good look over them and uh, keep that in your mind for the time being. 
So uh, we've spoken about the, this cage and video accessories. There is also a photo option as well in the same way. And we can have a look at that. So that one here is a much more compact little unit. And what this one does here is it enables you to put this on, you get your Arca Swish plate, so you can mount to a tripod or a you know, monopod, whatever you want. And uh, you can also do it this way as well for vertical shooting. So your horizontal, vertical shooting, they both have the Arco Swiss mount and you've got some holes for accessories as well. You've got access for the battery. And again, it's molded. You can see that sort of curvature in it. I'm hoping you can pick that up. I'll just bring it out here. But you can sort of see the curvature in that where it's really beautifully molded into the shape of the hand. So when you've got it on the camera, it feels really, really nice. So what I'll do is I'll just get rid of this cage and I'll put this on. I'll show you how simple that is because it really doesn't take any time at all. You'll also get to see the cage separated. So in the bottom of this cage, they have little tools for you. So you've got a tool for assembling it with the little Allen keys and then you've got what is a screwdriver in effect to mount it. So if I... There we go. And there off it comes quite quickly. That was just me because I'm not used to it yet. I'm unfamiliar. So excuse that. But uh, the actual item is quite amazing. So I'm just going to put that in there. I'll put the locking pin back so I don't lose it. Just a few turns of the thread so I don't miss that. You put your little key into its little slot. And once it's in that little magnetic slot, it'll stay there forever. So it won't come out. And there's your cage. So you can now see that quite uh, independently. How compact it is and how versatile with all its little mounting holes, etc. And you can see the profile of it, how it's quite smooth and molds into the hand very well. So that's the cage, we'll put that down for now. And now we'll have a look at this item here, which is the small rig L bracket. And so the L bracket fits on pretty much the same way as the cage does. You've just got to get it all the right way around. And uh, there is a little trick to it, and that is uh, only that when you put it on the right way around, you must make sure that your little uh, uh, strap clip there is facing up. What happens when you do that is it just enables it to be a bit more rigid and uh, stay on a little bit better. So if I can get everything in position, and then they give you another little key again, and then you can fit it in and just screw it down. And it is, this is, look, it's two screws again because you've got your one main screw for fastening it on, and then what you've got is another little screw. So I'll just get this down first, there we go. So I've got the main screw down, as you can see, in position. And then you've got the second little screw, which it says there, locating pin or locking pin. So we just screw that one down, a few twists. There we go, nice and firm. Don't have to overdo it. You're not trying to strip the threads. You just want it on. And there it is uh, put onto the to camera now. So your Z9, you've got your little uh, L bracket. That empowers you now to mount it here on the Arco Swiss mount there. You can mount it on the Arco Swiss there. And of course, you can hold the camera all day taking photos. If you want to do some handheld photos as well, it's extremely comfortable to use. You can see here that it uh, molds on quite small and flush and doesn't intrude in your taking your photos, whether you're using your grip or you're using it horizontally. All your buttons are still accessible. You can still get to your battery ports and all your little mounting ports here as well. And of course, your card slot's not interfered with at all. And uh, this gives you the wonderful uh, ability to be able to mount it quickly on and off a tripod when you want to. And it's, you know, the other advantage of these sort of brackets and cages is that it gives a little bit of bump protection as well. So when you put it down, you're not putting it onto the camera, you're putting it onto the L bracket. That takes a little knock. Well, so what? It's a $100 item. Whereas the camera is, you know, an $8,000 item. So I'd much rather knock and scratch and bump a bracket or a frame any day than my camera. So that's a good uh, safety precaution as well as a very versatile unit. And I, I give these two, two thumbs up because I have had a look at them and a good use and I'm very comfortable with them and I love them. I've had small rig equipment for a very long time. I'm no marketer of them. I'm not trying to promote them because I've got shares in the company. I just believe in promoting something that's cheap, effective and actually works and is great value. And they are that. So as you can see, you've got your little strap bracket just sitting up here. There is a little slot available for that and that actually helps keep it all rigid and firm. So definitely don't remove this. Just put up with the fact that it's a little bit of a, a fiddle a one second little fiddle, just to make sure it's in the right position when you put the bracket on and then you're right to go. So uh, loving that, uh, they're great little accessories and I give them absolutely 10 out of 10. So we were just talking about uh, this 
nice L bracket from Small Rig that I think is wonderful and is a great complement with or without the cage, depending on your priority of doing videos or doing photos or a bit of both. So I'll put these accessories away. We've seen plenty of those for the time being. Uh, the one thing I'd like to talk to you about next, of course, is I think is extremely important when it comes to accessories and comfort, is the little eyepiece here. Now you may see this protruding eyepiece in the back of the camera here, and I'm referring to this item here. Now, what has this uh, got to do with anything? Well, when you have the Z9 from the factory, they give you this wonderful little device. Now have a look at how skinny that is. It is absolutely tiny. And that was the eyepiece that they give you comparatively. So if you can see that there, in fact, it's so very small, you can barely pick it up comfortably, but you can see the difference in the size and dimension. If I bring this, uh, where can I bring that so you can see? Now I'll go that side, I think it's actually better. Get a bit more light maybe. Here we are, just trying to position it. I'm looking into my monitor just to see how it looks. So yeah, so you can see the comparative there. You can see the eyepiece protrude out, and here is the, the old one. That is the original they give you. That flimsy, tiny little thing that basically uh, diverts no stray light at all and just gives you a soft rubber bumping point for your eyelid up against the camera. This is pathetic. First thing I would recommend you do, and I think everybody has said that has ever seen one, is you throw that out. That's crap. You don't want that in, on your camera at all. You want a proper soft rubber eye piece like this that molds into your face. And when you take your photos, it's very comfortable, it's soft, saves your nose hitting the uh, screen because it gives you a bit of barrier between the two, cuts all the stray light out so you can actually see your monitor in there clearly and get a great view clear without stray light coming in the side and, and sort of glaring on you and, and cutting out the clarity of your vision. The other advantage of this is it does rotate. So as you can see there, you can rotate it and it's very effortless to rotate. It's not like it's any difficulty to do so. So when you're doing your horizontal photos, you can rotate it in a way that's very comfortable for that position and rotate it back and in any way you like. So this is actually, this eye cup is a really big deal. I'll show you pictures and links to it uh, on the descriptions later on. But uh, get yourself a good comfortable eyepiece. This is an essential piece of equipment. Remember, you're spending thousands of dollars on this Z9. To spend an extra 30 or $40 on this eyepiece and get that extra comfort and uh, visual uh, perfection is definitely worth the investment. So this is another thing I would like to encourage people to get a hold of. Now, uh, let me just talk to you about uh, this for a second. Here we have an FTZ adapter. This is the FTZ adapter Mark I, the original one that came out. And it's a great unit, it functions extremely well. Now I also have the Mark II version. I own that as well. And that of course doesn't have that protruding lump that you see there. But they both function exactly the same. Now, the reason I'm mentioning this is because I just want to show you that on something like a Z9, it is really relevant to have uh, the right type of unit. It's not that you can't use this, but if I just illustrate, when you put it on here, you can see that you're actually losing quite a lot of room there. You're not really having a lot of finger grip. You can get your fingers in. So if you want to hold this, well, you can, but it's just a little bit annoying and intrusive. So I'd recommend you get the Series 2 version, and that just empowers you then to make sure that everything's nice and cosy and comfortable and uh, there's no intrusion in the benefit of having the grip. Because there's no use having a grip if you can't actually benefit from it. So I encourage you... If possible not to use the one version of the FTZ adapter as this is, use the Mark II version which gives you a nice flush fitting and no intrusion on your finger grip. So you That's might say, well why aren't you showing me the Mark II version? Well I have the Mark II version, I'm using it on the Sigma lens on my Z6 right now. So I've needed to use it, that's why I can't demonstrate it. But uh, I believe me, you really want that Mark II version without the protruding little bump makes everything much more comfortable. Also works very well on the Z6 because what happens is once you put a mount on your Z6 for you know, an Arco Swiss mount, then what happens is then you can't twist the <laughs> FTZ adapter on because that lump gets in the way of the mount. So it's like a no-win scenario, that thing. I really don't like it at all. I have it still just as a backup really, but the Mark II version is the way to go with the Z cameras as far as I'm concerned. Makes everything just so much simpler. And we're just talking about that, so before I go on any further, I'll just say that my previous video, the sound quality and video quality wasn't that great. And the culprit for that was in fact this. I had no Z6 at the time. I happened to sell all my gear. And so I was using my mobile phone just to do the video I'm recording with. And that uh, will explain to you why the sound was so bad. Now I did have a 
lav mic on at the time, but my receiver was turned right down. I hadn't noticed that the setting on the sound was so low it was ineffective. So I had to fall back on the sound coming from the camera, from the phone, sorry, and of course that was atrocious. So apologies for the bad sound on the last video. Uh, the picture quality ended up okay because I was shooting an 8K on the, on the uh, camera, the phone, and then what I did is I resolved it down to 4K to produce it. So anyway, the video quality wasn't too bad, but the sound quality was still atrocious, and I'm sorry about that. I've made a big effort tonight to make sure that I compensated and got the sound right. So yes, I'm using my lab mic, but it's uh, recorded into a external receiver and transmitter directly into the camera. So the sound quality should be vastly improved. Please let me know if you've noticed that. The other thing I would like to mention to you is that because these cameras are heavy, and look, it doesn't seem so heavy when you're just holding up the Z9 on its own perhaps, but once you get a decent substantial lens on, and I just use this 85 as an illustration for the time being, and yes, I will have to use the FTZ adapter to mount it. So I'll just put all this together for us. There's the FTZ adapter, and I'll put my signal lens on. All right, and once we've got all that together, I'm just going to put the hood on just to emphasize the largeness of the lens. So here we've got the package together. And this is quite weighty now. That's got a bit of girth to that. So you're probably looking at over two kilos of equipment and uh, that's uh, quite annoying to hold all day. So how do you go around with this ungainly camera and heavy lenses? And like, so for example, let's say you're carrying around a 70 to 200 all day. How would you tolerate that? Or birding and you've got a you know, 400 mil or 600 mil lens. It's going to be very intrusive and awkward for yourself. Well, I can give you a suggestion. My suggestion is for you, is the cotton carrier system. Now I have a cotton carrier system here. Excuse me if I don't get up and put it on, I'm gonna be a little bit awkward here sitting down. And this will just be for illustration purposes only. But I'll see if I can get this on for you and make some sense of it all. So where are we? Here we go, we can flip this one on, it's a simple vest. And once I've managed to get the clip around the back and fasten it, you'll see it on. And so that's the vest there. So you can see what's going on. It gets all the weight onto your torso and you've got a little harness clip. Now how do you mount that to the camera? Well, it's as simple as this. They give you a little accessory that just simply screws onto the bottom of your camera. So I'm gonna screw this on now, just starting it up. And I'll need an Allen key, which I have plenty of them here. And we'll just tighten that one down. doesn't take long. You just got to uh, get it in the right position and uh, then you just tighten it down to your satisfaction. There we go. And we've got that on. It only took a few seconds, didn't it? And so as you can see now, you've got the little mount on the bottom. It's just a little slot arrangement. And so what you do is you put it sideways, turn it that way and it stays on. Hands free. No hands necessary to carry a camera all day. You go on your little hike, you can carry something in your hands, carry a little camera bag or a lunch box or a tripod or something. Because your hands are free, it means you can carry this thing all day and it's no burden. And it doesn't uh, feel unnecessarily awkward or heavy at all. But it's certainly a lot better to have your torso carry all that weight, especially in the center of your body line from your, your backbone, and therefore you don't notice the burden of the weight all day. I think this is a highly recommended structure to have if you're going hiking, for a very long walk, or you know, like you're a, an event photographer and you're doing maybe a wedding or a festival all day, you don't want to have to carry that thing in your hands all day, it's going to kill you. And if you have a, a strap on your neck, it's going to be jarring your neck all day, you're going to come up with one hell of a headache by the end of the day. So I'm uh, encouraging people to get a cotton carrier system or another branded one that's of similar quality. I think the cotton carrier is a really good quality one. And also I like the feature that they have all these other little straps on them. So when you want to, um, so like a backup, for example, I can now clip this in. Now I've got a camera strap attached to it so that when I'm having it separated, oh, I let go of it, the strap will catch the camera and it doesn't go to the ground. So it's an awesome little backup system. They give you two straps. I would never have two because then I find it too hard to take photos. If you've got one strap, you can take your photos and it's not a burden or an intrusion. But you've got two straps, you've got two hands fumbling over all your controls. It's extremely annoying. But as a backup system, it's really good. And for carrying around all day, how could you beat this? This is a wonderful system to have comfort and control all day. And let's face it, you never have to put your camera down 
you also never lose your camera. You can't say, now where did I put that thing? Did I put it? If you can't see your camera in front of you like that, you've got issues. So <laughs> you certainly know where it is all the time. And it's very quick and, and sturdy to release. It stays on. It's never going to come off. The only way you get this off, you can't get it off just by lifting it up or bouncing. You have to twist the whole camera on that angle, 90 degrees, and then pull it out. And then you do the same to put it back in, and then it locks in position. I have a whole video on this system, but I just thought I'd quickly introduce it now because it's certainly most relevant since we've got involved with the uh, Z9 and its extra weight. So I thought I'd show you that one. I hope you like that little demonstration. So sorry, I didn't even think about that, that I had the uh, microphone, of course, on my chest, and then I put the cotton carrier system on, it probably drowned out all the sound. So I'm just going to reiterate it very quickly in case the sound was grotesquely uh, interfered with, that the cotton carrier system is very quick and easy to put on, simply a little buckle like this, it doesn't take more than a few seconds with a simple Allen key that they'll give you. And then by using that harness, you support your hands free and it's very safe and comfortable all day if you're a wedding or event photographer. So I use it all the time and I highly recommend it. It's a brilliant option for getting the weight off your neck and shoulders. So I've just removed that little cotton carrier system pin because there's something else I want to talk to you about. An yeah. Icon Z9 has a wonderful big battery. It's wonderful. It'll last most of your, all day for photos and video, uh, providing you have modest use, you know, within reason. Doing 10 hours of video, maybe it won't, but it'll certainly last a long time for most applications. And so that's great, but what do you need if you're running out of battery? What can you do? Well, you can buy a second battery. That's not a bad choice, but it's about three or $400, and it's pretty expensive to buy a second one. There is also another option, and the other option here is a battery block and a transfer cable. So what am I talking about here? Well, I have this one here and proper power transfer cable. And what you can do with this here is you plug it into the appropriate socket, USB-C, you can see the blue lights coming on there, I think. Plug it into your USB-C terminal, and now you're powering your camera. Now, how do I know it's going to be powering the camera? Well, because it has a little red light that'll come on and show you that it's working. Can you see that? Just under here, you probably just see the little red light there because the uh, L brackets that are covering it a bit, but you can, I'm sure you can still see it in this area. That's showing that it is powering the battery. So regardless of what charge you've got in your battery, all the power has been coming from this first. The only time it's going to start using the battery now in the camera is when you unplug the battery pack. So how do you carry this around? You might think, well, that's a nuisance. Well, this is where this bag can come in handy. You can have a small camera bag like this and uh, you zip it up, have a little strap and you can put that on the side of your shoulder and you can power this thing all day and you can roam around, you can take photos and video all you want Leave it on a tripod all day and it will just charge the entire day and you'll never run out of power. This battery bank here would actually be equivalent to five, I would say five, maybe six of the EL15 batteries that you'd have in your Z6 or Z7 and probably two at least of the battery in the Z9. So it's very, very strong and it'll last you all day and you never have to worry about power again. So if you are knowing you're going to do a lot of videoing, something like this or a second battery is pretty essential. I'll tell you the, what I find, and I, I like to show you what I actually use. I have a little what they call a bum bag here in Australia. I don't know if that's what they call them in the States or anywhere else. But a little bum bag, and what I'll do is I'll put it in that. And the reason I put that, that there and then just strap it to my side is because what happens there is nice and snug on the body and it doesn't move and not going to come off and doesn't flap around. So that's just a tidy way of having the battery and then of course being able to photo and film all day and never worry about your battery life. Just a tip or suggestion there, but for uh, even just having this battery pa pack around with you in case you may use it is fantastic because what happens if your phone starts running out of charge? Well, you can charge that with this. If you've got an iPad or anything else, you can charge it. So you never run out of battery power. So leave one of these in your Camry bag, and then uh, you'll always have power with you and you don't have to worry about battery life. And of course, it works with the Z6 and Z7 Mark IIs as well. So of course, that's a great all-rounder as an item. So uh, I'm going to encourage that. And a good power transfer cable as well, I think. Okay, and so last but not least, we're going to talk about something else with the cameras, and that is, of course, We've spoken about this battery door, which I think is actually amazing. I love the fact that it has a lock on it. So when it has the lock on it, of course, you can get access to your cards, your memory cards when you need them. But of course, it doesn't just flick open every time. I know the Z8 does it. People tell me that it doesn't, but it will. In time, you'll be using this camera enough shots and it'll start getting loose. And every now and again, you'll flick it and it'll just open up and the car door will open. It'll get really frustrating. 
take it or leave it or my word for it, but I'm pretty confident it's going to happen because it is exactly the same battery door. It's not a different one just because it's a Z8. It's the same design at least anyway. Uh, so this idea of the lock is wonderful because I know that the cards are always secured and sealed and they're not going to flick open. But while we're talking about cards, I'm going to show you my memory card and so you understand where I'm coming from. What I have here is a Pergear card. It's a two terabyte card. Now you might say, oh, two terabytes, that's crazy. Yeah, why would you have that much storage? Believe me, on the Z9, that's not a big deal. If I shoot at um, RAW 4K that is down sampled from 8, K uh, and uh, N-Log, I can get two hours worth of video on this. So that's, that's it, really, two hours. Maybe a little bit more because I've got a second card, of course. But my point being that don't think that a 128 gig card or a 515 card is going to do you. That's all right for a backup or an overflow card. Your primary card in a Z9, if you're doing video particularly, and that's what we're talking about here, if you're doing video, you want a good quality and a very large file. So you want at least, I'm thinking one terabyte would really be the minimum I would recommend in a Z9 if you're doing any length of video and of high quality. And let's face it, let's just think about this a bit. Why would you buy a Z9 and then choose the lowest quality video option? Why not just stick with your Z6 then? So the only reason you're buying this is because of all the options and uh, accessories you've got. If you're not going to use those options, what would you buy it for? So, you know, if you're going to spend the money, spend the money on a good quality card and one of decent volume. As I say, I've got two terabyte cards. I think they're extremely appropriate for this camera. And while we're talking about memory, there's another issue with memory. You know, it's all very well to say, oh, I've just taken two terabytes of video or four terabytes of video using up both cards for the day. Now what do you do with those files? Where do you put them? Do you have a hard drive space on your computer sufficient for that? Do you have an empty four or five gigs on your computer? I hope you do because you're not going to be able to do anything with that video and edit it if you don't. The other thing I've done uh, that might be useful to think about is I've bought an external hard drive, a uh, 14 gigabyte hard drive. And so what I do is I download the files on that and then process it and then put them back on that and that way it doesn't interfere with my actual computer's memory as such. So my internal hard drives and processes and so on are not uh, exploding because of these massive files being stored on them. So uh, consider definitely if you're getting the Z9 to upgrade your computer hard space storage because you're really going to need multiple, multiple terabytes of extra space, not only for long-term storage, but also even for the sheer processing of the video and its expansive file size. So in summary for the whole uh, journey, what we're talking about here is various uh, brackets that make life a lot easier. We're talking about accessories such as the handles, for example. You can have a top handle, you can get side handles that'll fit on those cages. And also, very importantly, things like a cotton carrier system for supporting the weight with such a large camera and its lenses. And I think if you do that and you get the right memory arrangements, both for your computer and the correct cards, and here's another little detail about the cards while we're talking about them. It's not about their speed only. So you might look at the card and say, oh, look, it has uh, 1,700 megabytes a second speed. Fantastic. Well, that's great, but that could just be a really fast peak at the beginning, and that can drop extremely low after a few minutes. So if it starts at that, but it, fin it averages out, it's, it's a consistent, sustained write speed is less than 1,000 megabytes per second, you may struggle with those high-quality video files and uh, your buffer rates. So the Pergy one I happen to have has a consistent write speed of 1,300, and that's really good. That's actually probably exceptional. So if you check out the sustained write speed on your cards, not just worrying about the maximum speed, and that's the essential thing to getting the best longevity and great results from your camera. I mean, after all, you don't want hot card warnings. You don't want video interrupted through card issues uh, halfway through an important event. So make sure you get the right equipment and you'll never be sorry and you'll love your Z9 every bit as much as I do. So I'm, I'm giving myself two thumbs up for buying this. I think it's a great camera purchase. I did have to buy again after selling all my gear. I bought a Z6, but I bought the Z6 Mark I and I got it for $600 Australian. That's so cheap. That's $400 US. I bought that secondhand on eBay just so I could make these videos in decent quality and get the sound and picture quality up to standard. So I just wanted to say thank you for putting up with a few of my uh, verbal uh, fumbles, but I appreciate your time and patience with me. I hope this has been entertaining and 
of interest. And again, I always love to listen to your comments. So if you've got something to say and share, please, please feel absolutely free to extend yourself and uh, I'd love to correspond with you at the first opportunity I get. So have a lovely evening and thank you for your time once again. Bye-bye.